All right, so let's take a look at one more extension of our number system, and that's to the decimal realm. So in base n, each unit is n of the next unit. So for example, if I'm working in base 10, I have my unit, which I'm going to call a 1. There's our smallest amount. 10 of these make a 10, and that's our next size unit. 10 of those make a 100, and that's our next size unit and so on as far as we want to name larger and larger units. On the other hand, I can imagine finding smaller units. So for example, let's blow that one up. So it's a big thing like this. So there's my one again. I've just drawn it larger so that I can divide it into smaller pieces and I can break it into 10 pieces. Well, I would call each of these pieces a 10th and I might take one of those 10th and break those into even smaller pieces and I'm going to call each of these a well we need a name for them so to remember that 10 of the original pieces formed a tenth and so 10 tenths form a one so each of these very small pieces here well if I take each of these small pieces here it turns out that 100 of them are going to form a one, so I'll call them a hundredth. And I can keep going. I can break each of those hundredths into ten more pieces, and each piece would be called a thousandth. And again, and as far as I care to invent new names for smaller and smaller pieces. Now, let's talk about naming these numbers. Consistency counts. There is really no difference whatsoever between expressing a number using tens, hundreds, and so on. We're just extending our place value chart. So for example, let's take a look at a number here and I have my place value chart where I'll actually write out what the names of the units are. And I have some number of hundreds, some number of tens, some number of tens, some number of hundreds, and so on. So I can express the number in words by identifying how many of each unit. So here I have 100, two tens, one tenth, three hundredths. And so I should call the number 120, one tenth, three hundredths. And that would be absolutely consistent with how we name numbers, except English wins. Uh, unfortunately, English, as well as all other natural languages, is very inconsistent when we name amounts smaller than one. And how we do that is the following. We identify the whole number and the fractional part. We split them using the word and. and the fractional part for reasons unknown, but again, inconsistency of natural languages uh, is going to be traded into our smallest unit. So what does that mean in this case? So my whole number part is still going to be 100 2 tenths, 120. My fractional part I'm going to express by saying and whatever this is and the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pile all these pieces into the smallest available unit. Well, I can do that using the trade rate. I'm still working base 10. So my trade rate is still 10 for 1. So this 10th here, this thing here, trades for 10 more in the next place over. And so what I have is this as the amount that I'm going to try and name, and I'll name it 100, 2 tens, and how many things do I have here? I have a total of 13 hundredths. So I'm going to name this 13 hundredths. And so there's my name for the number 120 and 13 hundredths. So far so good. Um, but this is the verbal expression of the number. We'd actually like to try and write what our number is. So again, we want to take our number here. This is what we're actually working with. Uh, we don't have an abstract symbol for 13. Uh, what we have to do is we only have abstract symbols for the amounts from 0 up through 9. So we need to put that tenth back where it belongs. And we're going to write our number by replacing the concrete objects with our abstract number symbols. So what's that going to look like? Well, there's one. This concrete object here corresponds to the abstract number symbol 2. 
There's nothing here, so my abstract symbol is going to be 0. There's this, which I'll replace with the corresponding abstract symbol 1. And there's this, which I'll replace with the corresponding abstract symbol 3. And then finally, I'll drop the place value chart to get our numerical value. Except, as written, I can't distinguish this number from 12,000 no hundreds 10 and 3. So I have no way of distinguishing this number, which is actually 102 tens and 13 hundreds from a much larger number. To avoid this confusion, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a decimal point to separate the ones from the tens. And so this number becomes 120. And the decimal point tells us that here's the ones place. So this is 120. There's our whole number portion and 13 hundredths.